Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in. And in, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about creating components or more specifically assemblies in Fusion 360. All right, so if you have come from any other CAD software, you're probably familiar with a part file and an assembly file. Uh, typically these are two different things in pretty much every other CAD package. Whether you're dealing with SolidWorks or Inventor or Creo or something else, you are probably familiar with this structure. There are some exceptions with things like Onshape, but in Fusion 360 we have a single design file. Every design file at the very top level of this browser contains a single component. But if we want to have mechanical motion in a design, if we want to make a detailed drawing that has a bill of materials, if we want to make exploded view animations, we need to create an assembly structure based on components. So in this lesson, we're going to take a quick basic overview of what this means before we dive back into sketching to create a mechanical design that we can then apply things like joints to replicate our mechanical motion. So right now we have design one. This is the file that we were working on with our basic sketching and part modeling. What I want to note is that in the browser we have a bodies folder and if we expand this we have body one. When we have a body in Fusion 360 that is a design element that is fixed in space. We can use modify tools such as move copy, we can select it and we can move it around but without that functionality it's fixed in space it's not going anywhere. And that's because inside of this browser, we have an origin. We have the origin as well as the axes and the planes. And these are the definition behind this design. We use those planes to define the sketches and then we use those sketches to define the solid bodies. So this means that everything we created is based specifically on that coordinate system. What I want to do now is I want to talk about components and components are the critical element to make this design mobile. So we're going to select body one and there are a few different ways that we can go about this. We can right click and select create components from bodies. We can go to assemble and select new component or we can completely start a new design with an empty component and then begin building it. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to right click and select create components from bodies. This creates component one and if we expand it and we expand the bodies folder it contains body one. Above this we no longer have a bodies folder because the geometry is now contained within component one. If we take a look at the timeline we have our original sketch, we have our extrude features and our fillet and then this one here that creates our component. A few things that I want to note about this next to the component there's an activate component this radio button that lets us focus in on this component alone when we look at the timeline you'll notice all the other features disappeared and that's because they were created at the top level of this design one of the benefits to creating components early is that we can better represent the timeline for each specific thing that we're modeling and what i mean by that is any feature for example if we decided to create a chamfer we go to modify chamfer select this edge and say OK we now have a chamfer feature inside of this component if we were to go back and activate the top level that chamfer is still there because the top level shows all of the sketches the features everything that was done in this file but the component itself will only show sketches or features that were done when it was active. Another thing I want to note if we expand this it contains its own origin. If I show this origin it's at the exact same location as the default or top level but what's different is that I can move this component around and the coordinate system goes with it while the origin of the top level file stays put. As soon as I move this around Fusion wants to know exactly where it is there's a capture position or revert position option. So if we revert, it snaps it back to that original coordinate system. However, if we capture it, what we're doing now at the very top level is we're putting another feature in the timeline. That position 
is now the coordinate system location from the original coordinate system to the new location of our design. And this is the critical step or distinction that we want to make here is that each component will have its own origin and coordinate system as well as its own bodies and components. So for example, if we activate this component and we go and we create a new empty component, we're going to make it empty, we're going to activate it, we're going to say OK. Now the icons change because we've created what's considered a sub-assembly. We can create as many bodies inside of each component as we want. We can create as many components as we want. And we can organize these designs however we see fit. Fusion also gives us the available option to do things like dragging and dropping. I just pull that component back out. And now we have component one and component two. And they are their own distinct, unique designs. For example, if I move my component one around, I can capture its position, and then I can take a look at the origins for component two and the origin for component one. So even though it was originally created inside of my design, it's now able to be moved around. I know this is a bit confusing. It's a little bit of a different approach. So it's gonna take some practicing and playing around with to see how to use this. And that's exactly why we're going to start again practicing our sketching, practicing our part modeling, and taking a look at some of the best practices when it comes to creating these assemblies. When we restart our design, we're going to start with empty components. We're going to activate them so that every sketch and feature is contained with each component. And that makes the assembly and the modification of each of these a little bit easier. So for right now, what I really encourage you to do is play around a bit with moving things around, taking a look at some of our assembly options, and when you're ready, dive into the next lesson where we'll start our design at the sketch level and begin building a brand new assembly. I am gonna go ahead and save this design, because remember with Fusion 360, each time you save your design, you're creating a new version. You can go back to older versions at any point in time and even promote them to be the most current. So if I don't like what I've done here, I can always revert back to an older version. But from here, make sure you play around and check out the next lesson when you're ready.